all flesh is as grass, and all the glory thereof as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower falleth, but the word of the Lord abideth forever. And this is the word of good tidings, which was preached unto you. When I was in elementary school, our Sunday school did a presentation on the Twelve Disciples in the Fellowship Hall of the Church. Our church was very small, and so was the Fellowship Hall that sat next to it. But, as a kid, it felt like we were playing the palace. And even though the crowd was about 30 people, it felt like a sellout at Yankee Stadium. The teacher didn't have the heart to ask any of us to play Judas, so she asked her son, who I believe was a junior in high school, to stand beside all us little kids and tell the audience that he was history's most notorious traitor. I was the tallest of the grade school kids, so our teacher picked me to play Peter. I remember my opening lines. I was to look straight at the audience and say, I'm Peter the biggest and strongest of all the disciples. I don't remember the rest of my lines, but I do remember being slightly embarrassed about looking at all the parents and bragging about being so big and strong. Our show went well, and it turned out to be fun portraying Jesus' most notable disciples. In Sunday school, the great men of the Bible were presented to us in the best possible light. The flaws in these men would be learned by us in later years as we matured. But in Sunday school, they were portrayed as absolutely wonderful. Moses was the great leader who parted the Red Sea and led Israel to the Promised Land, not the guy who blew his chance to get into the Promised Land himself. And David was the brave conqueror of Goliath and Israel's greatest king, not a murderer slash adulterer involved in the Old Testament's most sordid soap opera. And Noah was the godly man who built the ark and took care of all the animals, not the drunkard lying naked in his tent. And Peter? To us, he was the biggest and strongest of all the disciples, as well as the most famous and the most overzealous. He seemed to be Jesus' favorite, the biggest supporting player of the greatest story ever told. We knew he tried to walk on water, but didn't get all that far. But at least he got out of the boat, the only disciple with the guts to do so. And we know, in his zealous desire to protect his master, he cut off the ear of the high priest's servant when they came to arrest Jesus. But the high priest's men were the bad guys, and the fact that Peter sliced off an ear sounded to us, well, really cool. What we didn't know was how complicated he actually was. The Catholic Church sees Peter as the first pope, based on a passage in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus calls Peter a rock and says, upon this rock, I will build my church, as well as giving him the keys to the kingdom. In Rome, St. Peter's Basilica Church is supposedly built on Peter's gravesite, with his tomb directly below the high altar. In Eastern religion, he is considered the first bishop of Antioch, having planted a church in Antioch, which was in northwest Syria, before heading to Rome to become the first bishop there. To Protestants, Peter was a leader in the early church, but held no formal title. When Jesus was talking about building a church upon a rock, he was talking about a believer's faith not Peter himself. 
In 1927, near the end of the silent movie era, the famed Hollywood director C.B. DeMille made a 160-minute epic about Jesus called The King of Kings. It became a classic, and one critic called it tremendous from every standpoint, and the finest piece of screen craftsmanship ever turned out by DeMille. But Hollywood's master showman couldn't help but tamper with the storyline of the greatest story ever told. Mary Magdalene is portrayed as one tough harlot. And travels in a chariot pulled by zebras. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is shown as the mother, or adopted mother, of all her son's followers. And one character is a boy assumed to be Mark, who would grow up to write the second of the four Gospels. He's portrayed as a crippled boy healed by Jesus, and celebrates his healing by tossing his crutches into the street. The Pharisees don't care for this, warning the young Mark that Jesus is not of God. But the boy dismisses what the Pharisees have to say. This gets them a little testy, and then Peter makes his grand entrance to save the day. Hollywood told the world that Peter was the disciple that you just didn't want to mess with. Peter was born in Bethsaida, a fishing village on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. His original name was Simon, or Simeon, and his father is named in the Bible as Jonah or John. He and his brother Andrew were fishermen, and they settled in Capernaum, a fishing village about six miles southwest of their hometown. Peter's wife is never mentioned in the scriptures, but he must have had one because Jesus healed his mother-in-law according to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. She was in bed with a high fever, and Jesus went to her bedside, took her by the hand, helped her sit up, and the fever suddenly left. Surely, no one who honors the Savior will for a moment imagine him as he entered the chamber where the woman lay tormented, saying to himself, Here is an opportunity of showing how mighty my Father is. No. There was suffering. Here was healing. What I could imagine him saying to himself would be, Here I can help. Here my Father will let me put forth my healing and give her back to her people. She was not only healed, she got up and made dinner. According to the Gospel of John, Peter's brother Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. Roughly 700 years before, the prophet Isaiah spoke of a messenger being sent ahead and a voice crying out in the wilderness. And it turned out to be John the Baptist, described in the Bible as wearing clothes of camel hair and living in the wilderness, surviving on locusts and wild honey. No prophet had spoken for 400 years, and suddenly here was this colorful outsider 
who offered hard lessons to the elite and the common folk alike. He spoke of the coming of the Messiah, told people to repent of their sins, and baptized countless believers in the Jordan River, and eventually Jesus himself. According to the Gospel of John, Andrew and another disciple of John the Baptist were standing with him when Jesus walked by. John the Baptist looked at Jesus intently and said, See, there is the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Andrew then went to find his brother Peter and told him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to meet Jesus. Jesus looked intently at him for a moment and then said, You are Simon, John's son, but you shall be called Peter the Rock. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was preaching on the shore and great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats standing at the water's edge while the fishermen washed their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. This must have sounded strange to Peter. This carpenter from Nazareth was telling an experienced fisherman how to fish. Sir, Peter replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But he decided to give Jesus the benefit of the doubt. If you say so, sir, we will try again. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Peter was awestruck by the size of their catch, as were the others. Jesus had healed his mother-in-law and now brought him the biggest catch of his career. This carpenter from Nazareth was the long-awaited Messiah. Peter fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, sir, please leave us. I'm too much of a sinner for you to have around. Jesus replied, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for the souls of men. As soon as they landed, they left everything and went with him. There was no hesitation.